Dear Nintendo, hi, it's me, Austin. You know, I've been making this series since, uh, depending on how you count, about half a decade by now. And you know what's a constant worry in the back of my mind? Whether or not I'm gonna run out of ideas for videos. It's been an anxiety since, so oh, like week two until about now? The, uh, this moment right here, I still worry every day. And sometimes you'll see it in the comments section too, like, oh, I guess Austin ran out of ideas now. <laughs> Like somehow each ridiculous premise is the final shark jump. Like this is the final straw of absurdity. And you know what I've learned in all this time of making videos? I will never run out of ideas. I'll never stop jumping the shark. Each video is just another shark in a long line of sharks I've jumped over and nothing can stop me. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I think being locked inside for the entirety of 2020, hiding from the COVID apocalypse is finally getting to me. Plus, it's darker outside right now. We just had the solstice. Serotonin levels are reaching critical lows. But we can do this together. I was wasting time the other day instead of working on this video because I didn't have an idea at all of what I wanted to do. I was doing what I do when I don't know what to do because when I don't know what to do, I know exactly what to do. Watch speedruns. They are peak useless and I love them. I was watching Mitch Flower Power's latest Super Mario Bros. 3 world record run of 1 hour, 10 minutes and 1 second. And when he got to World 2, the desert world, he was accosted by the thing of my nightmares when I was a kid. The angry sun. God, this thing gave me nightmares when I was young. Just a perpetually angry little thing hanging in the sky ready to jump you and make an otherwise easy level and absolute terror. I think it's beaten only by those creepy masks from Super Mario Bros. 2. I hate both of you so much! But it wasn't until I was much, much, much older that I learned that you can actually kill these freaking things. That's how hardcore Mario is. He can kill the sun! Which got me thinking, what would that actually mean? What if IRL, someone came up with a giant enough turtle shell and were able to just boop, blot that sucker out of here? But damn! I mean, it turns out fun somehow in the Mushroom Kingdom. I don't know, maybe they have like two suns, but uh, let's just say that the Mushroom Kingdom takes place on Earth or something close enough to Earth. What precisely would happen if we just snapped our fingers and got rid of the sun? Let's find out. Okay, so here's the sun and here's the Earth and bam, the sun is gone. What happened? Well, nothing, actually, for a while. You see, right now, at this very second, we could just evaporate the sun into nothingness and we wouldn't know it. This is because the sun is very, very far away from us. It's over 91.4 million miles or 149.6 million kilometers away from us. In order to get a grasp of just how far that actually is, the fastest passenger jet currently in service is the Boeing 747-8. I, which has a max speed of Mach, Mach, <laughs> Mach, Johann Sebastian Mach, which has a max speed of Mach 0.86. It would take this Boeing at top speed over 15 years to travel this distance, and it would circle the globe over 3,600 times in the process. Given the generous 25,000 hour time between overhauls or TBOs of the four massive General Electric GENX engines that power this thing, it had burned through 20 engines in the process and cost roughly $636 million in replacement engines alone. And if it started now, by the time it finished, I would be 48. My child be 19 and out of high school. And oh, I do not like thinking about that. Okay, moving on. So yeah, the sun is super far away from us. So far, in fact, that it takes light traveling at, uh, you know, the speed of light, eight whole minutes to reach us. That's right, the light reaching us on the Earth right now is old light, eight minutes old, but it's not, pause. 
Hi! Actually, upon in the recording booth right now, I realized that that's actually not true. The light reaching us is way, way older than eight minutes. It's actually like thousands or even millions of years old, uh, depending upon the research that I do after I get out of the booth, because the light is generated actually in the sun itself, not at the surface. And the photons move toward the surface slowly, hitting atoms and kind of being absorbed and then shoved out further away. And it takes them a long time to get to the surface. So it's actually much older than eight minutes old, but it's eight minutes from when it leaves the surface to getting to us. Anyway, back to the episode. But it's not just the light that's old reaching us, it's everything. Information, aside from some weird quantum mechanical outliers, has a speed limit. This is what we call the speed of light, but it's not the only thing that moves this quickly. Gravity does as well. That's right, not only is the light we're getting old and used up by eight whole minutes, it's like just about everything we get from the sun is, even the gravity keeping us in orbit. The bad news is this means that everything we get is a castaway from the universe eight minutes ago. The good news is that we wouldn't actually immediately die if the sun was deleted from our solar system. We'd have like eight minutes of blissful ignorance before our world became a living nightmare. Thank you so much, Mario. Okay, so Mario kills the sun somehow, and we get eight minutes of reprieve in the Mushroom Kingdom, then it's lights out everywhere, and then we die? Well, no. Oh, okay, uh, actually, yes, but not immediately. Things don't become immediately bad for us. In fact, we'd be fine for a while. I mean, we'd have no sun, that would definitely be bad, but we'd still have electricity. Only about 1.7% of the world's energy production is solar, so while temperatures worldwide would begin to drop almost immediately, many of us, at least those of us watching this video, would have a few precious days worth of HVAC to keep the cold away. I'm not sure what this means for the Mushroom Kingdom, however, since it appears to be a dark age economy. They do have airships, though. I I'm sure they have fireplaces or something. The good news, I think, is that the cooling of the Earth would be pretty slow. We have an atmosphere that's decent at holding in heat, and the Earth itself has quite a bit of heat all of its own stored up from back when it was first formed. The bad news is that while our globe slowly transforms into World 6, we'd have just enough time to contemplate how totally and utterly boned we are. Astronomers calculate that the globe would cool by a factor of about two every two months. If the mean temperature of our Earth right now is 300 Kelvin, or 80 degrees Fahrenheit, in two months, it'd be cut in half to 150 Kelvin. Not too bad, right? Wrong, buddy. That's really cold stuff. Negative 120 Celsius, or 189 below freezing in Fahrenheit. Really bad stuff. To give you a sense for how freaking cold that is, the lowest temperature ever recorded, which was negative 89 Celsius, or minus 128 Fahrenheit was in Antarctica. Your HVAC system can't compete with this at all. Being at best, what, able to raise the internal temperature of your apartment from 189 below to what, at best 100 below? You better be lighting a fire and standing right next to it if you don't want to die. But you're gonna die. Because by now, two months in, almost all vegetation in the entire world is dead. Some trees might still be alive, the hardiest ones, barely. They've got like, at best, a couple couple years to survive the incoming frozen hell. Meanwhile, the Earth was just like flung into nothingness without a sun to hold it into place. It's gonna zip off in a tangent wherever it wants. If it's really lucky, or unlucky depending on how you count it, we just have a close encounter with another planet like Jupiter, maybe crash into it. That's very hard to predict and depends a lot upon when Mario has killed our sun off, but it doesn't really matter because almost all life on Earth at that point would be completely dead and the top of the ocean will have begun to freeze over even with all that salt in it. Our atmosphere would also be toast. There'd be nothing left to produce it. Oxygen is a fairly volatile chemical and requires constant production in order to be maintained. I'm looking at you, tropical rainforest, and without plants to process CO2 into fresh oxygen, all that oxygen is gonna be consumed partially by what little life remains on the planet, but a lot of it, it's gonna just start reacting with stuff, forming bonds and eventually disappearing into nothingness. The good news is that we will be dead by now, like way 
way dead, super dead. Most of us within the one month mark. So thanks for sparing us slow suffocation, Mario. So we're drifting through space, our heat gradually radiating away into nothing, our atmosphere disappearing, our ocean freezing, and uh, what else is going on? All right, I forgot the storms. The first few weeks of the disappearance of the sun is likely going to ravage the earth in storms, unlike anything we have ever seen as the temperature gradients spike dramatically and what little heat is left redistributes itself rapidly across the rest of the planet. This means hurricanes and tornadoes, both of which off the scale in both number and intensity, would just tear up everything. Wind gusts measuring in the hundreds of miles per hour as our pressure slowly equalizes without a sun. The good news is that this would stop pretty early, maybe like a couple weeks in, but man, those two weeks would be nasty, really grim stuff. Thankfully, Mario killing the sun with a turtle shell does act as a pretty effective long-term solution for global warming. Like, that problem would just be thoroughly scratched off our list of issues. I got 99 problems and global warming ain't one. The last album ever made on Earth. So, humanity, I mean, the Mushroom Kingdom is doomed, right? No sun equals disaster, death, no chance for survival? Well, the answer to that question is no. There are ways to survive the disappearance of our sun. Not only that, we could thrive. And how do we do that? We wait until another episode. <laughs> what, you can see how long this video is and can tell we're nearing the end of it. Did you think I was gonna make a 30 minute video with the holidays and everything? I mean, I'm writing this during the holidays. Ain't nobody got time for that. But if you wanna see how you and your family could survive the incoming mario Apocalypse, comment on how you would spend your last days on Earth before freezing to death and subscribe to the channel so you can see it when it comes. And I swear to God, if you say anything about part three of the richest game characters down there. I will lose my freaking mind. I'm working on it, okay? Sincerely, Austin. And I want to give a personal shout out to my high level patrons who make this show possible. Is B, Mads Jurgensen, Ronald Coleman, Jared Beecher, Nicholas Blinger, Marissa Resnick, Adam TP, and Mazer. You guys are freaking awesome.